In recent years, active shooter drills have become more and more common at schools all across the country. One question some people have been asking lately is, do those precautions change because of COVID-19? Newswatch 12's Rachel Eiler spoke with school district leaders and joins us now live in studio with details. Rachel. Yeah, Justin, both crises are still very prominent and in the back of everyone's minds as a very different looking school year has started. But even though schools districts haven't publicly said how they would handle training for an intrusion, the Rhinelander School District told me that it's been a plan in the works for months. Good morning, eighth graders. It's Ms. Boomer talking to you from her living room. For the past six months, staying safe from COVID-19 by staying home was students' new norm. But before that, this is a lockdown, locks lights out of sight. Preparing for an active shooter in their classroom was the reality. And as kids return to campus, those two very real threats greet them, both potentially dangerous. A lot of these things you don't talk about or you don't talk about in normal situations. Rhinelander School District Superintendent Eric Burke says it's been a thought in the district's mind. If this happens, what do you do? If this happens, what do you do? Looking for guidance from state officials to answer those questions. So the recommendations that we've been providing schools slow things down, divide up the drill into different sections of the building or um, different times during the school day, and really focus on providing additional space for students if they are going to practice an evacuation. And they're doing just that. Our, our administrators have been talking about is having individual classrooms practice these instead of the whole school practicing at once. Students have an awareness of what they need to do, but it won't be school-wide, it'll be more classroom-based. But the DOJ adds that recommended protocols for COVID-19 in classrooms may be at odds if that potential shooter becomes real. During the circumstances, what is the greater danger? If we're talking about a drill, there's a way that we can um, sit down and do it in a very thoughtful and planned out way to make sure that the students are practicing the skills that they need without exposing themselves to any physical health risk. But when we're talking about um, an actual crisis or an attack that's happening inside of a school, even if we're talking about a weather event, obviously their immediate physical safety concern is going to be what gets addressed right now rather than you know, being concerned about uh, exposure to COVID. Wisconsin has previously faced eight school shootings since 2009, the most recent being at Waukesha South High School in 2019. Before that, a gunman opened fire on Anago High School students as they were leaving their school prom. With the increase of gun purchases during the pandemic and students not having a stable routine or access to support resources, the DOJ will continue to monitor possible school threats while schools continue to adapt to new procedures. This is, uh, is an opportunity in school for learning and, and also to discussing about what you would do and I think a big part of it is um, if you talk about it and you learn about it then if it ever would happen and hopefully it never happens you're, you're ready to to act yeah, and Rachel, just to make clear, these types of shooter drills are required by law. Is that right? Yes, Justin. Schools in the past were required to participate in these drills as well as report them to the school board under an act called 143. And even with COVID-19, that's no different this year. But instead of having active shooter drills or even fire drills, weather drills as an entire school, like Superintendent Burke said, it will be more classroom based to lower those possible health risks. All right. Thanks, Rachel.